Good evening and a very warm welcome to Television Tonga's news package for tonight. Making headlines, Acting Prime Minister urges the people of Hawaii to ensure that all reports submitted to the National Emergency Management Committee are accurate. Members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints harvest their yam plantations in Tokumololo. Seven-year-old girl from Nukahatulu drowned and died. In a dental health department, we're fortunate to receive an assistance from the Nautilus Minlos Tonga. These are more stories later on in this bulletin. I'm Fatai Fenga are with the news for tonight. Tonga continues to make waves on the international scene in its effort to rally support from international partners for small island developing states or SITs. Information from the Prime Minister's office states that the call of the meeting was to discuss how to utilize the blue economy as a tool to shift development in SITs and coastal states, uh, coastal states rather, towards a sustainable development. In a speech from the Honourable Prime Minister Lord Divano, he emphatically stated, the blue economy is extremely important for Tonga and the Pacific Islands region as the islands are scattered across the largest ocean in the world. He highlighted that oceans are often portrayed and unpredictable and powerful and an obstacle that needs to be overcome to address small islands isolation, geographical dispersion and large distances between uh, communities. Accompanying the Prime Minister to the meeting is the CEO of TERM in Okebala Finau and TERM's Senior Advisor Akao Ola. Assistance towards the relief efforts in the Hapai group of islands continues. This afternoon, the Honourable Acting Prime Minister Sami Waipolo received a donation from the Japanese ambassador to Tonga. The Acting Prime Minister made the statement in an interview with Radio and Television Tonga in a special program to mark the presentation of Japan's multi-million dollars worth of goods donated to the Hapai group of islands. He says some of the reports they've received from the town and district offices reveals a few numbers of residents in a particular village or island, but when they distributed the food and the other items, the number of the islanders exceeds the figures they have. He also urges the residents of Haapai to contact Nemo when they're in need instead of speaking to the local media as they cannot cater for their needs. If people could call the Haapai's governor office for their help instead of reporting it to the media, that will help ease our duties in catering for their needs. I also wish to clarify that all assistance presented to the Tongan government are not on cash but in a form of goods and other items. The acting Prime Minister also received Japan's assistance, which includes water tanks, portable cherry cans and others, the tune of 13 million yen, which is equivalent to 2.3 million paanga at the Nemo. It was presented by Japan's acting ambassador, Tetsuya Murata. I hope that uh, this uh, emergency assistance will uh, help for the uh, affected person, people in the Hapa Island. And then uh, for the emergent stages, so I think uh, the government of Japan can um, help the, this support. Uh, but uh, the, for the reconstruction stages, you know, we are going to consider the additional support. I don't know the, what we can do yet, but uh, we will. Mr. Murata also reveals that the Japanese government will continue to support Tonga in any way they can. According to the information from the Nemo office, this donation from the people of Japan will be shipped to the Hapai group this evening and should be arrived there first thing tomorrow morning. From the Nemo office, I'm Anasiu Falegano for Radio and Television Tonga News. The acting Prime Minister also received a donation from the Ian Jian Company, a Chinese company in Tonga who is willing to lend a helping hand. Anasiu Falegano reports. The Honourable Acting Prime Minister Samuel Waipulu and the leader of the Yanjian Group Construction signed the documents for the prevention of the generous financial assistance. Mr Waipulu thanked the construction group for the donation which he says will help the government relief efforts in Hapai such as providing tents for many people who are displaced in the aftermath of Tropical Cyclone Ian. The first secretary from the Chinese embassy in Tonga, Li Rusi, says when they heard of the devastation caused by the cyclone in Hapai, the Chinese government immediately planned for ways to best help in the relief efforts in the Hapai group of islands. 
Meanwhile, the Nemo Direct Delivery Hour says that the cash donations are deposited into the Ha'abai Tropical Cyclone Ian Relief Fund. For Television Tonga News, I'm Anasi Falikaono. The Minister for Finance and National Planning, Dr. Aisakeheke, welcomes the World Bank announcements that Tonga will be the first country to benefit from insurance coverage under the Pacific Catastrophe Risk Insurance Pilot, or PCRIB, and will receive an immediate payout of $1.27 million or $2.3 million per anga towards recovery from Tropical Cyclone Ian next week. The BCRIB has been made possible through the joint effort of the Government of Japan, the World Bank, the Secretariat of the Pacific Community, SBC, and the governments of six Pacific Island countries, including Tonga, which are covered by the BCRIB. The Honourable Minister of Finance and National Planning says Cyclone Ian's devastation to the island group of Hapai triggered the first Pacific Catastrophe insurance payout. He says the bayout under the pilot insurance scheme will help governments through the National Emergency Management Office, or NEMO, to meet some of those urgent needs as it continues its rapid response to alleviate immediate needs to date. Ms. Daike further acknowledged the responsiveness of all development partners to support government and NEMO's coordinated response for relief assistance to Hapai and added that the World Bank and ADB will support government's damage assessments in the next week. This further assessment work will help government to gain a full picture of damage caused by the disaster and to assist the reconstruction planning to rebuild those affected areas with a view to increase disaster resilience in the future. Despite the heavy rain today, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints at the Gomololos Ward 2 harvest at the yam plantation this morning. A contribution of yams from this harvest will be sent to Hapai for victims of the cyclone. Funonga Bekoso was there and filed this report. The yam plantation of the church members was to be harvested next month, but due to the Hapai residents' need of food, they then decided to harvest their plantation ahead of time to help the Hapai group of islands. A church member, Samson Ilaumape, told radio and television Tong News they are happy with the outcome of their hard labor during the year. We plan to harvest our plantation next month, but because of one of our co-farmer needed to help his family back in Hapai, we then decided to carry out our harvest today. The longest yam was five feet and four inch long. The members also hope that their plantations help cater for their daily needs after they took part in last year's Royal Agricultural and Handicraft Show. For Television Tonga News, I am Fonunga Vikoso. And that's the latest news from uh, Hapai, but looking at other news items, a seven-year-old girl passed away at Nukuhetulu after being drowning, after the drowning rather, at the Nukuhetulu Beach area along the Ananakoso area. This was according to the superintendent of Maini Police Station, Inspector Tupo Otaha, in an interview with radio and television Tonga News this morning. Inspector Tupo Otaha says the deceased was out swimming with two other girls, both at the ages of 11 yesterday afternoon. Police received a report on the deceased disappearance at 5 yesterday afternoon. When police arrived at the scene, the locals had already found the deceased who was swept away along the Anana coastal area. This was after the two older girls had called for help. While speaking to radio and television Tonga News, Inspector Otaha urged the public to look after their children and not let them out on their own to go swimming during school breaks. The governor of Mabao, Lord Fulivais, is urging fruit pickers selected from the island of Mabao to make use of the opportunity they have while taking part in a temporary fruit picking scheme at farms in Australia and New Zealand. The governor made the remark in a special training for the fruit pickers of Neyafu this week. Radio and television Tonga's news correspondent on the island of the Vico Tapololo says the governor reminded the group of temporary fruit pickers to fulfill every task appointed to them with all their might as others will be following their foot paths in future. More than 300 men and women take part in a scheme since last year. Mr. Tapuelo says the group will depart for Australia and New Zealand next month and will spend more than four months there. 
The Ministry of Health Dental Department has its first portable X-ray machine, thanks a generous uh, donation from the Nautilus Minerals Tonga. Emma Jane Mayer reports. The portable X-ray machine was purchased with a financial donation of 14,000 baanga from the Nautilus Minerals of Tonga. The portable X-ray machine was handed over by a senior officer from the Nautilus Minerals Tonga, Selina Lekeleka, to the Chief Dental Officer of Viola Hospital, Dr. Amanaki Farakov Gaitao, and Dr. Fusi Fifita. This portable X-ray machine can be used in clinics and taken to the outer islands when we take trips to see patients in the outer islands. It can also be used in forensic dentistry work where we can identify a deceased person using this machine. This aid aims to help the people of Tonga in general. Nautilus Minerals of Tonga aims to help the people of Tonga. We've decided this is one way we can do it by supporting dental health. We also decided to support this division after we witnessed a lot of people and children coming here for treatment. The Nautilus Minerals Tonga has been providing various support to the dental division since 2008. Emma Jane Vale for Television Tonga News. The first cruise liner to visit Tonga this year and docked at the Vuna Wharf today. The Silver Wishbar Cruise Liner, a Bahamas registered boat, brought 276 tourists and 291 crew members to Nukalofa. Speaking to Radio Tonga News, the operation manager of the Dateline Shipping Agency, Lupin Othoma, says the cruise liner was in Nukalofa for a couple of hours before departing in the afternoon. Visiting cruise liners not only help inject more income into the tourism industry, but it also generate income for local graft makers, tour operators, and privately owned taxis and buses. The Silver Wishpa arrived at Tonga from Paupango, American Samoa, and departs Tonga for Auckland, New Zealand. And that's the local news for tonight. Here's your sports news with Senator.